Hello and welcome to another episode of Atlanta Film and TV's Conversations with Atlanta Movers and Shakers. I am your host, Mandisa Johnson. Today we are having a conversation with Deandria D. Green. Deandria D. Green is a senior manager in Bennett Thrasher's state and local consulting practice, where she focuses on providing state income franchise tax consulting, sales use tax consulting, and other state tax services to clients of varying sizes and legal entity types. In this role, she assists clients in reducing their tax liability and effective state tax rates. Additionally, D leads the SMART compliance practice, which assists clients with meeting state sales tax software solutions. While at Bennett Thrasher, DeAndrea has also advised motion picture studios, television networks, independent film producers, and digital entertainment companies across the country on how to pursue, utilize, and monetize movie production incentives and tax and film tax credits. Her work primarily consists of educating clients on the law surrounding available state film tax credits and the qualifications required in pursuing those credits. While assisting clients with claiming film tax credits, DeAndrea has analyzed production expenses to determine qualifying expenditures, conducted due diligence reviews, and drafted due diligence reports that indicated relevant procedures and findings. Hello, DeAndrea. How are Hello, you? Hello, Melissa. I'm great. Thank you for having me. And feel free to call me D. I know DeAndrea is a mouthful sometimes. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, my parents, for that name. But feel free to call me. We're going to have girlfriend talk. So feel free to call me D. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So we mentioned a little bit about who you were in our introduction. Could you share more about who D Green is? Yes, thank you so much for that opportunity. And I think that's important uh, and relevant to this conversation with film and film world. So I'm an army brat. Um, and I, that's important because we moved here from Germany in 92. Um, and my dad's last duty station was at Fort McPherson which we all know now is Tyler Perry Studios. Right. So um, that is a little, you know, great history for me and that connection of being an army brat and why we moved to Atlanta. Um, and then my love for the entertainment business um, grew from, I attended Tri-Cities High School, which is a performing arts high school here in Atlanta, Georgia, which has produced the likes of Big Boy, Andre 3000, Candy Burris, um, Maisha McQueen, so many great talented artists. And so I, my love for entertainment, I was in the singing performing arts grew from out of that. And okay. I initially wanted to be an entertainment attorney and um, which I'm kind of working my way. So I do entertainment tax, so I'll call it from what you read. I do entertainment tax. I know when you were reading that background, people probably like, what does she do? So I'm an entertainment tax lawyer. My love grew from just the rich history here in Atlanta. I'm proud to be, like I said, I've been here from since 92. Atlanta is home. Um, and I just love the scene that we have here. So that's a, a little bit um, about me. And I went to um, undergrad at the best HBCU with the baddest band in the land okay. on the highest of seven hills in Tallahassee, Florida, Florida A&M. And I got my law degree from Thurgood Marshall, another great HBCU, and my um, second law degree, which specializes in tax from Boston University. So that's me. Okay. Wow. You have an extensive background. You know, once upon a time, I don't know, my husband will say probably still do, I wanted to be an entertainment attorney. Um, took not too late, Mandisa. Not too late. Not too late. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Second person that said that took entertainment law class and I loved it, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but not, this is not about me. This is about you. So you are a senior manager in Bennett Thrasher's state and local consulting practice. 
Mm -hmm. Talk to us about how you began advising motion picture studios, television networks, independent film producers, and digital entertainment companies. Yes. So um, one of my partners with the leading partner of the firm um, in the entertainment practice, Peter Stathopoulos, he kind of built this entertainment practice. When film was just taking off, when nobody thought that they would be a booming film economy and a film tax credit, and he kind of was in the right place at the right time. He was a real estate lawyer doing other kinds of things. And so he's built this practice. I had a sorority sister who knew I was, I had just moved here to back, back home to Atlanta from DC. And I was doing mergers and acquisitions. And she said, I know you want to come home. I'm moving on to a dis I mean, to Viacom at the time. And she was like, would you like to try for my job? And I said, uh, sure. I said, I don't really know much about, you know, film tax credits, but why not? And so I jumped in there with Peter and started learning everything there was to know about film tax credits, realizing, started seeing all the motion pictures being filmed here going to the Capitol, reading the legislation, getting involved in all of the organizations and kind of just, that's how I started um, picking up with where Peter kind of left off, being exposed to the clients that clientele that he had and just being in the right rooms, meeting the right people. That's how I start started um, advising studios. And Bennett Thrasher, actually we work with um, mostly, if not all of the motion, motion um, big film studios across the country. Wow. Yeah, the, the 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 boom really started. I remember because um, I moved here in 2000 and I watched like literally everything just boomed. Yes. And because, you know, there were a few projects that were filmed here, but it wasn't nearly as big as you, big as it is now. You drive down, you know, certain streets. We're in we're near downtown Decatur. Sometimes they're filming. Um, over by the high school or yes. they filmed the they film the ra- majority of Raising Dion over yes. my daughter, my, my daughter went to school at. So it's always something. Something going on. It's beautiful, right? So I know when I first started doing this, people were like, oh, Atlanta is the, AT, AT, uh, the ATL wood of the South. I'm like, no, Atlanta is Atlanta. Like, And the reason why you see that boom is because of the film tax credit in just we we have um, all four seasons. So, you know, if you go to New York or you go to LA, you know, the economy, you know, it's expensive there, but mm-hmm. we have such a, a rich history here, such a beautiful city, uh, all four seasons, like I said, in that robust and great film tax credit. So that's the reason for that boom. And we appreciate it. Yes, it's, it's, it's great. It's really great. Um, so can you talk about Talk to us about what you do when you advise motion picture picture studios, television networks, independent film producers, and digital digital entertainment companies. Sure, sure. So what Bennett Thrasher does is um, we are we audit the the expenditures expenditures for the uh, motion picture studios and the productions to make sure. So you know, there's those those spins. So I won't bore people with how you have to spend five hundred thousand dollars in order to get the credit. Well, Bennett Thrasher is one of six uh, authorized uh, firms to audit those expenditures. And what that means is we look at the expenses to make sure they meet the qualifications to get the credit. So just because, you know, you said, oh, I spent $500,000 and I should get, get the credit, but you need somebody to really analyze those credits to make sure that they, one, stimulate Georgia's economy, Mm-hmm. And that there are Georgia expenses and that there are approved expenses. Like, for instance, let's say you're filming in Georgia, Hawaii, and New York, and somebody submits a plane ticket for all of that, for that whole trip. Mm-hmm. Well, the expenses related to the flight in New York and Hawaii are not going to count. Only the Georgia flight is going to count. Mm-hmm. And the, um, the expenses used for the travel agent in Georgia. So we analyze things like that to make sure those expenses are accurate and that you have in fact reached the $500,000 threshold and that all your expenses expenses will qualify. Oh wow, see, I'm learning something. <laughs> that that makes sense. Make you can only like only the state of Georgia counts. Yes, the state tax credit. That makes so much sense. Yes. And Mandisa, that's what I tell my clients when I'm like, "Hey, 
before you send your expenses, ask yourself, does it stimulate the Georgia economy? Does it relate directly to Georgia's economy? Because if not, we're not going to give you credit for an expense that is beneficial to New York. We want it to grow our economy. And in exchange for you spending good money here, we're going to give you that credit. Wow. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break, but we'll be right back. Bennett Thrasher provides a wide range of accounting services, consulting services, tax services. When Rick and I started the firm in 1980, we knew we wanted a place that would be different where people would enjoy working. We've always believed that if you put people first and create a place where people feel like they can trust leadership, feel like you could bring your complete self to work every day and pursue your career, but then also have more of a balanced life. We think that that will result in productive people. What we find is if we keep our values in order, we provide much better service to our clients because we know that our integrity is intact, that our relationships with our families are good. And so that's very conducive to going into the marketplace and taking care of our clients. And we do that quite well. We recently moved to new offices here in the Cumberland Vinings area in Atlanta. The setup is a bit different than what you'd expect from an accounting or a legal firm in that regard. We have more of an open environment, a collaborative environment. It looks and feels a little bit more like a tech startup, if you will. We've got 300 plus associates and partners. If you want to work with other departments or you have a need to work with other departments, everyone's right here. You can rope people in pretty seamlessly versus having to wait for someone on the West Coast or whatnot to kind of get back to you. When you join Bennett Thrasher, you're not getting just a job or a career, you're getting a life. And with that life comes an entire extended family. And we treat each other as family, which also extends to our clients. Our clients are not just clients or customers, they're also parts of our family. We do exactly what we say we're going to do when we make a commitment to our associates and to our clients, and that is what makes us different. I think that the reputation of Bennett Thrasher in this marketplace has been built on doing the right thing. I think it's unique in terms of a business that does the right thing without regard to the cost. It is one of the best places to work in the country, one of the fastest growing accounting firms in the world. We've managed, I think, to make our business about us rather than about me. And I think that kind of collaboration results in a better answer for our clients and for our people. And people like being a part of that. Welcome back to Atlanta Film and TV's Conversations with Atlanta's Movers and Shakers. I am your host, Mandisa Johnson. Today, we are having a conversation with Dee Green of Bennett Thrasher. So can you talk to us about the requirements regarding Georgia film tax credits, mandatory audits? Yes, so the thresholds and things of that nature have stayed the same. So like I said, the $500,000 spend, but Georgia recently made it mandatory that you get an audit either by the state of Georgia or one of six qualified accounting firms or auditors. And George, I mean, Bennett Thrasher is one of those six firms and we're, there's only two Georgia-based firms and we're one of those two Georgia-based firms. So the mandatory audit, where it used to be where you didn't have to get an audit, you can qualify for, I mean, you can do your application to get the expense, I mean, the credit, the film tax credit, and nobody, if you wanted to get an audit, it was, it was optional. And I, we had a lot of business in that too, because when you go to sell the credit, people want to know that they have confidence that somebody has looked at your credit and looked over those expenses that we just talked about. So now Georgia has required and made it mandatory that you get an audit, again, either through the state or one of the six qualified um, firms to do the audit. So that's really the big change is this mandatory uh, in the mandatory okay. audit. Okay, so how and when will the mandatory audits affect independent film and TV producers? So they have already gone into effect. Mandatory um, audits are, you're kind of grandfathered in prior to January 1st, 2021. So if you had your application in before January 1st, 2021, then you're good. But for um, companies that have um, a certain amount of money and a certain amount of credit that they're trying to go after, those audits are effective, were, were effective January 1st, 2021. Okay. But, you know, with anything, with new legislation, it takes time, right, to roll it out. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that they give you grace period 
for people to get caught up because just like while the, the production studios are trying to keep up with these requirements, the state is also too saying, okay, we wrote this legislation, but how does it really work? So it's taking, you know, it takes a, a while for people to understand the requirements, see how they really are into play, going from paper to actual, how do we do this? So they're in effect, um, but patients with the auditors and patients with the state too. And um, yeah. That makes, that makes sense. So um, how has COVID impacted what you do as far as advising? So COVID, um, you know, at first when it came to filming, um, when everything was shut down, that was a big, you know, scare for a lot of people. But it's um, fortunately, Georgia was one of the first states that successfully opened back up for COVID. And so that's why you see another boom here, right? So other states, you know, New York um, was still really not fully open because they had a hard, large cases of right. COVID. So Georgia <clears throat> is a state that has safely opened up their doors to allow filming. But during um, COVID, we still were able to advise our clients via Zoom, like we're talking now, mm -hmm. but the filming kind of decreased. So they had to get creative in how they filmed, but they were still making some expenses and we can still, we can do that anywhere. We can advise people on their expenses. But like I said, I'm glad it was alarming or scary for a lot of us. Like, is filming not going to happen anymore? <laughs> how do they do filming? But filming has, like you said, your indicator raising Dion streets are blocked off we're back in business um mm -hmm. so um and like I said I'm I'm happy that Georgia is one of the first states that fully be opened back up safely yeah a lot of people got creative um I actually interviewed um I can't remember but it was a film about COVID and it, it was done during the pan, the shutdown. And I know a lot of people have did like films via Zoom or mm -hmm. phone. And I was just like, that's so creative. Yes, yes. edited it down. I, I actually interviewed a girl who did a recording of a audio book via Zoom and they yes. edited And I was just like, I would have never thought to do that. It's amazing. It's amazing what how creative you are when you have to be. You know, you even saw fashion shows where people did. There was one lady who had it looked like models were in yeah. the clothes, but it wasn't. Yeah, and that was that was really dope and creative. Um, so, you know, yeah. we're creative people, especially in the entertainment industry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so can you talk to us about the music tax credits? Oh, yes, yes. So excited about that. Um, so I serve as a board member on the Georgia Music Partners um, for the Georgia Music Partners. And, you know, we had we were losing a lot of our homegrown artists mm -hmm. um, going to Nashville, New York and California. And as you and I talk, Atlanta is the hub, not just for film, but music like yes. Trisha Yearwood, R.E.M., Outkast, Goody Mob. The list goes on and on about who's from Atlanta. And we want to keep those people. So the music tax credit is supposed to um, emulate or imitate the film tax credit. And we had been working really hard on legislation to pass a credit where, like I said, like the film tax credit, where you'll, for spending money here in the state, we would give you a credit. So that passed and it was effective January 1st, 2018. And uh, it's a 15% credit. Um, whereas the, you know, the film is a 30%, up to a 30% credit. The the music tax is up to 20%. So an initial 15%. But if you are in an under underrepresented, underserved community, then you can get 20%. You have to spend um, where there's diff different thresholds. So for a theatrical production or a touring event, you have to spend $250,000 in the state. And that tour has to start here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, TI is going on the road and he's going to do a tour. Um, in order to get that credit for that tour, he would have to have his first show here in Atlanta and he would have to have a certain amount of um, development and rehearsals here. Okay. And like I said, the first show here in Atlanta. For other productions, other musical productions, so if you write music that's going to be in a movie or in TV, you have to spend $100,000. So, um, and again, it's a great credit. Right now, the only downside is that it's not transferable. So, mm -hmm. and what, why that is important is with the film tax credit, it's transferable. So let's say I'm Disney and I only need, I got a credit back of $2 million. 
and I only needed 1 million for my income tax liability. I can sell that other 1 million to another studio okay. or to a wealthy individual or whoever wants to buy it. That's the good part about transferability. So not only do you get to use it on your income tax, but you also get to make money, which is why we talk about monetization. But with the, the music tax credit, which we're working very diligently on to is to make it transferable. Because right now, only someone with Georgia income tax or Georgia withholding can take advantage of it. So like I said, we're trying to get, we're trying to make it as robust as the, the film tax credit. So let's say I want Beyonce to take advantage of this. If Beyonce doesn't have Georgia with um, income tax or withholding, she can't. But let's say, because you know how art is, they'll say, you know, I want to record my studio. I mean, I want to record my next album outside of LA or somewhere. I want to go to Georgia. We want them to be able to take advantage of that. So I'm really excited, Randisa, about this credit. And I'm, the fact that people said that we weren't going to get a music tax credit, that right. we're doing enough with the film tax credit, but we're in the door. And we have people like Tammy Hurt, who is very involved in the Grammys and um, is a governor of the Grammys. And she and Mala are, are making um, strides to help make it transferable. Like I said, I serve on that board to, to write the legislation for that. Um, I'm also encouraging, encouraging the TIs, the Rick Rosses, the, the Georgia artists to take advantage of this credit. Some people just don't know about it, you know, quite frankly. So we're trying to get the word out about this credit and um, so that people can take advantage of it. And if we start with our, at our Georgia folks, they'll start spreading the word like, man, did you hear about that credit? I got 20% back. And and being more knowledgeable, you'll start seeing that boom in music as well. I know people, we have the saying, Atlanta is full, but we're <laughs> trying to make it fuller by expanding this music tax credit. But I'm so excited about what we're doing um, with that. And, you know, get the word out. If you know musicians here who yes. can talk more about this spend and being creative too, because I know a lot of people are like, how can I reach 500000 250000 or hundred thousand dollars as an independent artist or but again creativity and figuring out how we can pool money together so let's say that you are a production company um, Mandisa and you know four or five artists that's under your production company we can use all of their projects creatively to try to make that spin to, mm -hmm. to reach that threshold so I'm okay. super excited about it yeah that it sounds exciting I'm actually uh working with an artist now a music artist um i'm pretty sure i don't know he may know about it but something that well I mean, if he doesn't let's talk about it yeah yeah so we're gonna take a break but we'll be right back Welcome back to Atlanta Film and TV's Conversations with Atlanta's Movers and Shakers. I am your host, Mandisa Johnson. Today, we are having a conversation with Dee Green of Bennett Thrasher. So can you discuss how the esports industry growth is impacting Georgia's entertainment landscape? Oh, gosh, another thing that I'm, <laughs> I know you're like, she's probably, she's excited about everything. But um, the great thing about being at Bennett Thrasher, it's a very entrepreneurial family oriented better together kind of firm so we're always looking for ways to expand and so we're now looking to get into esports because it's such a booming industry uh, every kid i mean my nephew the <laughs> three-year-old is playing he probably shouldn't be playing gta or <laughs> Fortnite, but he's playing it uh, there's colleges who have majors and degrees mm -hmm. in esports now so it's heavily changing our, um, our landscape. Georgia has several professional teams, I think three or four here in Georgia uh, gaming teams. Um, Georgia State has a robust program. So it's really changing our landscape. And that's the thing, that's the next boom. So, but you know, you have the film, you have the music, but esports. And 
there's tournaments everywhere. Kids are playing it all day. They're making tons of money, you know, on it. So they need us to consult because, oh, and, and esports was also for the first year since we were virtual, it was in the virtual Olympics. So, um, oh, excuse me, I'm trying to wave my hand from my light, but it's okay. Um, for the first time ever, esports was put in the virtual Olympics because people are like, that's not a sport, but these kids are playing it like a sport. Mm, people yeah. make tons of money for it. And where we come in is that, you know, we are a firm of accountants and attorneys advising them. Um, so you, you have these young kids and they're making all this money. You got to pay taxes on that. You need to be aware <laughs> what you need to pay taxes on because Uncle Sam is going to send you a note saying, hey, you owe us some money, but it's the landscape. Um, it's a billion dollar industry. It's going to keep on growing. We have women getting involved mm -hmm. in um a um, young lady named Keisha Walker, who has an organization that, that's dedicated to HBCUs and people of color in gaming. And she hosts a program that women have game and I'm trying to, you know, work with her. And so it's just, it, it's booming all around. And um, Bennett Thrasher wants to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that, that growth. Um, and I want to be part of all things entertainment in case you have not Oh no. It, yeah. It's, it, I can tell it's a passion of yours. Where I went to school, where I went to grad school at full sale, I believe they have an esports program too. Yes. So that's all strictly media and entertainment. So yes, yes, yes. So it's so definitely, definitely, I've been hearing about it. I think I knew about the virtual Olympics. I just forgot about it till you mentioned it. And I was like, you know what? I think I saw something like a news story a while ago. Yes. That. Yes. Yes. And I had um, on my LinkedIn, I, I just posted a story about the taxation considerations for anybody who wants to look up those considerations. Cause it's just always something that people either they forget about because they love the game. Right. So they forget about, but that's why you have us, your consultants to kind of say, you have fun playing the game. I'm going to take care of the business side for you. So um, they are also credits for the esports. They are not really talked about a lot, but that's going to grow. You're going to see legislation around esports because anytime something starts growing like that, taxes are sure to follow. Uh, and so, you know, you can't forget the business. You right. Know? Yeah. You got to have the business. Right. Sometimes the artist doesn't know the business side, so you got to take care of that for them. That's exactly. what exactly. That's what we're here for, because I exactly I'm good in the entertainment business side too. Exactly. So, yeah, they're not exactly. thinking about that. So yes, you're yeah. right. So can and when you, I speak at um, oh. sorry, mm -hmm. when I speak at our at like entertainment conferences, they're always like, "Uh, oh, what is a tax attorney doing here?" I'm like, oh. Well, let me let me tell you why you need me or why it's important. Because even down to when you're you're um, forming a a loan out company or something like, are you going to be an LLC? Are you going to be a sole proprietor? So things of that nature is like you need a team to handle the business so you can play hard and we can work hard for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that. Is. So, um, can you share with us a piece of advice for someone wanting to pursue your same career path? So I would say, stay hungry, get, get knowledge. Um, you know, there is um, a quote by Maya Angela Lou that says, when you um, learn, teach, when you get, give. And I think always be eager to get knowledge and to learn and to apply that knowledge that you learn. Get them networking, networking, network, yes. network, network. I tell young people all the time that there's a lost art in networking. Mm -hmm. But how many doors have been open for people, not based on your smarts and what's on your resume, but just because I talked to Mandisa and then Mandisa mentioned my name to somebody else who mentioned my name to somebody else. So getting in front of people, picking up phone, um, talking to people, shaking hands, going to conferences. So I would say that to put yourself out there. And then once you put yourself out there and say, and Medisa says, D, I'm giving you a chance, shine, baby girl. It's like, I want to have that knowledge to be able to show why I have a seat at this table and why um, I want to get putting pride aside and just shaking hands. Yeah, that, that, those are two great pieces of advice. I have seen so many posts on Facebook and actor groups. No, you, you don't need an education. I'm like, I, I don't. <laughs> say anything but I'm like no you're wrong like right 
I'm so grateful that it was expensive, but I was so grateful to go back to school and learn certain things because it yes. makes me know that when I'm talking to somebody, I know what I'm talking about and it makes me look professional. And even like acting classes, I've seen actors or people who are want to be actors. Well, I don't need acting classes. And I'm like, okay, well, that's <laughs> <laughs> and so Washington still takes acting classes. He may do it with a coach one on one, yes, but he's yes. still learning. But yes. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with learning. And the whole networking aspect, we're really big on that. Um, networking and meeting and connecting with people. I'm like, even if it's, you know, you know, you're not asking me for something, but you just want to meet you know yes. you don't know how specific people can help help you. you don't know who people know I always people, yeah, yes you I, never know who people know and you mentioned a good word connection right mm -hmm. so because um connection is really important like here at Bennett Thrasher and in, 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 in my first professional life in general and as I'm building my brand and building Bennett Thrasher's brand and you see everybody is talking about diversity and inclusion right mm -hmm. for some people it's a trend it's not a trend. It should be embedded in your culture. But when you talk about connection, it's about opening doors for people who will come behind them. Decent. Not just doing it for you or saying, well, what's in it for me? Or not, I hate, I despise when people say, well, I had to learn the hard way. I went to the school of hard knocks. And so she got to get it how she lived. You know, I, that there's some truth in, you know, in doing that. But there's also very valuable experience in sponsorship, mentorship, giving in like you said if somebody just wants to meet and Mendisa you don't know how how you'll change their world just talking them for, to them for 10 minutes and saying come with me I'm gonna make sure you have a seat at the table I'm gonna make sure your name is mentioned in rooms that you aren't in and and I do that at Bennett Thrasher Bennett Thrasher does that and I just want to leave that out there connection that you mentioned is vital um, to continue to grow and in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. all about connection and networking mm -hmm. people want to meet you over drinks people want to talk they don't want to they want to get to know you and know if they can trust you yeah so I started the Atlanta film and tv platform well the second time first time <laughs> I just wasn't feeling it but the second time but look at you now <laughs> I started it in 2019 and I had a friend that I usually post weekly like the like events I'll find events and I'll share them and um, I didn't realize that one of my friends was um reading my post and she found an acting class and she went and the guy was like well how did you find out about us and he was she was like Mandisa with Atlanta Film and TV and he was like well we know Mandisa and I was like how does this guy know me I've taken I've taken his acting classes like years ago. I didn't think he would remember, but I guess he's heard of the Atlanta Film and TV mm -hmm. platform. So yeah. he was like, "Tell her, tell her, thank you." Blah 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 blah. And I was like, "Okay," you know. So you never know who's watching and looking and listening and, and and watching you. Yes, that that's true. So, um, how can people connect with you? So I am on LinkedIn as DeAndrea Green. I'm also on Instagram at DeAndrea Green underscore ESQ. Um, and I think, I don't know if they can see our names. I, I don't know if I need to spell that out, how to spell my name, uh, but it's D-I-A-N-D-R-I-A -I -I again. Um, so, and it's DeAndrea Green underscore ESQ on Instagram. I'm always on Instagram posting something and on LinkedIn. Um, you can check out the blog post, like I said, about esports, music, and what we're doing. And uh, DeAndrea Green, I mean, DeAndrea.Green at BTCPA.net. I hope those words come out, but it's like I said, DeAndrea.Green at BTCPA.net. And contact, I like, like you said, this is a passion of mine. Um, sales tax is a passion of mine. Contact me about that. Contact me about music entertainment if you just want to talk. Um, but also shameless plug for Bennett Thrasher doing the audits for your, you have a movie coming out, you know, a motion, uh, if you know a production company and that needs our help, Bennett Thrasher is your firm. We do it all. We can do your CPA work and your consulting work. Yay, Bennett Thrasher. Well, thank you for thank you. Uh, joining us for on our conversations with Atlanta's movers and shakers. Thank you.